Hello, my beautiful bookish people. Today's video was supposed to be my May wrap up, but uh, I kind of subluxed my wrist while I was writing up my notes and I didn't get to finish writing them up yet. So instead, I am going to film a very impromptu drunk book tag. I think that's the name of it. But first, I think we need to figure out what drinks we're going to have with each tag because, let's be real, I am going to be a, a very safe and observant adult and go have some drinks, aka drink responsibly people. If you want to do this, you can do it while having drinks or you can do it sober. And if you're wondering who I'm going to tag for this, it's anyone watching this video that wants to do it. So please, come along for the ride, and uh, let's see what we have to cover. Prompt number one is wine coolers. You're 16 and you finally managed to sneak one of your mom's Smirnoff ices. What is one of your most guilty pleasure reads. Well, I don't have any Smirnoff ices, and really, I don't understand the concept of wine coolers, which I feel like I'm missing out on because I live in the burbs and I'm a white lady, so I should probably culturally know this. <laughs> but uh, let's go see what I have in the fridge. I guess we're gonna have a summer shandy. Close enough, right? Sure, why not? Cheers. And no, I'm not going to chug this, but I will be back in a minute once uh, I'm done with this. Okay, all done. It is time to go see what that prompt said again because I already forgot. Oh yeah, this was supposed to be about one of my uh, most guilty pleasure reads. Um, I'm gonna go with the Black Witch Chronicles. I can't remember the author's name right now, but I'm sure I've popped it up on screen already. But, I mean, the main character this starts out with is uh, very naive and there's just... A lot of cool things happening in this book because you go from a kid being in a very bigoted society to going off into the world to learn that her society was very bigoted and then learning how to unlearn that and you know just become a better person in general and it's all set in a fey world but um, it very much covers real world topics in what I think is a productive manner. A lot of people hate the main character because I've had two people that have picked up this book and come back to me and be like, why do you like her so much? I'm like, you're not an ex-fundy, are you? Because I related to her way too hard and I'm not sure how I feel about that, but that's my guilty pleasure read. Moving on to prompt number two, beer. You've made it to college and are hosting your first kegger. Pick your favorite new adult or college aged book. Um, I don't have any beer in my house right now. That summer shandy that I just drank was the closest thing that I had to that too. So I guess we're gonna have to substitute a different drink. Uh. I don't have anything with hops in the house right now anymore, I don't think. So I'm inadvertently picking Woodford, which is classified as Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Why they're using both bourbon and whiskey, I don't know. I don't know enough about this stuff. I just know that this used to be my cousin's favorite. And in the interest of preserving my health, one, I hate bourbon and whiskey unless it's in stuff, but uh, we're gonna do like a 
quarter shot because I'm not sure if I'm gonna hate this or not. And also, we have a bunch of other drinks to get through, and I don't want to wreck my body completely. Just partially, but not completely. So, uh... Heh. Close enough? Close enough? Sure, we'll go for it. Mm, I hate this stuff. Actually, I don't know that I hate this stuff. I haven't had this before, and if I do, I don't remember that I did, so... Cheers. <coughs> nope. This only belongs with raisins or something. Or with a mixer. Okay, the tail end of that isn't too bad, but no. No. I don't like. I I like my girly drinks, not straight. Oh! It's coming back with a vengeance. Oh, why is it cinnamony and burny and weird? Mm. I need water. Mm -mm. Do not like bourbon or whiskey straight. Not my drink. I love it if you love it and I love that for you, but I don't love it for me. My favorite new adult or college aged book. <laughs> It's not adult, but it is college-aged. I friggin' love Legendborn. If you've watched any of my other videos recently, you know why I love Legendborn. But if you don't know about Legendborn by Tracy Dion, Arthurian retelling, fae stuff set in the real world, and they're in North Carolina going to college as a summer program for teens, taking college classes when they get sidetracked by this uh, secretive society, and uh, shenanigans with face stuff happens, and I'm very much into it. The twists and turns were great. The way that racism is immediately combated is fabulous. I just... I love so much of this book. I love it so much. So, college-aged stuff and things. Yes, Legendborn, Tracy Dion, go read it. Question number three, tequila. You partied too hard last night and drank a little too much Jose Cuervo. What's a book that you never want to see again, or at least your favorite book? Oh. I don't know if I have tequila or not. I'm gonna have to go check my list. I have no tequila. How do I have no tequila? Now I want a margarita, but I can't have one because I have no tequila. But the closest thing that I have is Patron Citronge, which I know isn't even close because it's orange liqueur, but it's by the brand Patron, so fuck it, I guess. Baby shot. Also, why do I have no mixers? I don't like any of this stuff straight very much. Let's hope I don't hate this. Cheers. <clears throat> okay, that actually wasn't that bad. I don't know why I cough every time afterwards, but I like the aftertaste. That's uh, nice. There's actually a teeny bit left in the bottom, and I'm going to go for it. That's uh, much better than the other triple sick that I've had before, so uh, yeah. Patron Citronge, pretty good. Not as good as Grand Marnier, but pretty good. Me likey. Okay, now for my book that I never want to see again, and that would be How I Saved a Planet by Stephen Quattro. It was awful. I got it as an arc, but it wasn't an arc. It was the finished book, and... I had my main review out by the release date, but that wasn't the actual release date because the author put it in 
the place that I got it from wrong after it had already been published and he had classified it as a comedy and then made rape jokes and a bunch of other things that are just absolutely terrible. And I have a whole blog series about this book, which I will link down to in the doobly-doo. But yeah, I never want to read that book ever again. Question number four, beer pong. Shit, I don't have any beer anymore. Ah, I need beer or something. Well, I guess the other thing that I typically drink at, drink at parties is something that's uh, vodka-based, so I guess I'll go get something that's vodka-based in a second. Anyways, what's a book that you read super fast? I'll be right back. So you know how I just said I didn't have any mixers? I lied! I found Sprite and lime juice, so I'm gonna mix that with my... Um, Vodka. Yes, that is what I am drinking now, because I don't have beer. Why do I not have beer? Eh. Blub, 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 blub. I don't care that I'm not mixing drinks the right way. It's getting mixed. It's good enough. Cheers. Oh, that's lovely. I love tequila so much. I'm not drinking tequila, I'm drinking vodka. I love vodka so much. I like tequila and vodka, fuck it. You can't taste that anything's really there. I like danger drinks. I think I just made an adult limeade with bubbles. I don't remember what I'm supposed to be talking about. Oh yeah, a book that I read really fast. Let me go get that. I'm gonna go with Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala because I'm pretty sure I sat down and I read this all in like one afternoon. It is a very cozy murder mystery. I just wish that <laughs> the diabetic representation hadn't been a plot device and hadn't only been about people being like, oh my god, sugar. And I have a whole other video talking about the things that I do like and the things that kind of made me cringe in this one. So uh, yeah, read this book super fast. Question number five, spring break. You've thrown your inhibitions to the wind and end up having a sexy night you'll never forget. What is your favorite smutty read? What would I have drunk on spring break? I never actually went on spring break. I stayed home and worked. Uh, can I have another fancy limeade? I think I'm gonna go have another fancy limeade. I think I'm going to have another fancy limeade, but this time make it blue because why not blue and eh? all of the citrus and all of the food dye. Yeah. Yeah. Good enough? Sure, why not? And some vodka. Wee! Lovely lime juice. And some Sprite to top it off. Um, I guess I should have expected this color. Kind of looks a little bit swampy, but it'll be fine. Sure. Cheers. Ooh, that's nice. 
I think I'm gonna go enjoy this with a video that way I start slowing down a bit because I know this is gonna hit me like a ton of bricks in a minute and I don't want to be surprised by the ton of bricks that's about to hit me so uh see you in a bit <laughs> I've just been informed that the drink that I just made is probably called a sex in the driveway. And I got very confused when the person was telling me, I'm like, where? I am drunk. But I had a fun drink and it is very tasty. So would I recommend sex in the driveway, the drink edition? Yes. Would I recommend just regular sex in the driveway? Um... Maybe if it's in a remote area and you aren't disturbing your neighbors, then sure, why not? <laughs> Do I have a favorite smutty read? I'm gonna have to peruse my Goodreads. Oh yeah, I guess it would probably be Sunstone Volume 1 by Stephen Sajic. Um, I probably mispronounced all of that. But I have mixed reviews on this graphic novel because it is very lesbian smutty and very BDSM and somewhat fun. But uh, th th the words are so tiny and I couldn't read them very well and it made it a very difficult experience because I ended up getting a headache while reading this graphic novel. So I wish that had been different. But uh, that's probably the most recent smutty read that I have for you. So there you go. Question number six. Screwdriver. What is the most twisted book you have ever read? Why am I now Professor McGonagall? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have orange juice. And I've already had two lime-based juices with vodka. What am I gonna do now? You guys, I'm getting so drunk so fast and I was wondering why, because I've been doing half amounts, except for the last two drinks when I've been doing three quarter amounts. And then I added more alcohol to the mix with the blue curacao or whatever. And then I remembered, <laughs> I've had a sausage for breakfast that is not a um, um, covering up for something else. That's just what I literally ate. Euphemism. The word I was looking for was euphemism. And that's all I've had today, so that's probably why. <coughs> so let's make some food. We're going to have a food intermission with uh, this one and maybe also another drink, but definitely food. Thank you. 
what is another basically Moscow Mule. Isn't this a Moscow Mule? I don't remember, but it's delicious and limey and close enough. And yes, I'm a Midwestern girl and I love my ranch. Don't at me. I hope you enjoyed that brief food intermission and also Moscow mule that may not be a Moscow mule. I don't really know. He's just a twisted boy. Um, so the most twisted book I've probably ever read goes to Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Farseer trilogy. There's a whole Farseer world that she has created. I think that's the name of the world at least. Anyways, I really liked these books so very much. And uh, since this is the third one in the series, I don't want to spoil stuff. But uh, if you know, you know, the dragons are really mess messed up. Really really super messed up. And there's also some other super messed up stuff that happens to Fitz. Fitz never catches a break in this series. And I feel bad for him. So yeah, there you go. Question number seven. Long Island iced tea, the melting pot of alcoholic beverages. What is one of your favorite diverse reads? I don't have the stuff to do a Long Island iced tea either. And even if I do, I don't think I'm going to do that right now because, uh, we're getting into borderline vertigo territory and I don't want to go there. So we're going to stop here for now and I'm just going to answer that without a drink. Well, I guess I can take a drink of my trusty water. Just kidding, I need a water refill. BRB. Ooh, we are definitely in vertigo territory. I'm gonna go lay down and actually come back when I feel halfway decent again. Oh wait, maybe not. Eh? Okay, I'm just gonna make minimal movements. The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemison. I love it. I love what it does. It's a very rich world and a lot of cool characters. Check it out. Question number eight, sex on the beach, a drink that's great in theory, but wasn't exactly all it was cracked up to be. What is a book that just didn't live up to the hype? I'm gonna have to think about this one. I think I'm gonna go with Hocus Pocus and the all new sequel which I got for the Hocus Pocus readathon a couple of years back. And Hocus Pocus itself was basically the screenplay from the movie, so it made watching the movie feel very redundant. And I think I enjoy it more as a movie than a screenplay book form. And then the sequel I DNF'd because it was just so angsty. I wasn't in the mood for that in October. Question number nine. You've just gone through a rough breakup. So you park yourself in bed with your favorite bottle of wine, some ice cream, and a bucket of your, t <laughs> and a bucket for your tears. <laughs> Name a book that made you cry out all of your feels. I'm not going to have wine right now. I'm at the vertigo stage. I, I'm good. I, I don't want to go farther than this. But I do have some really nice wine in the fridge that I wish I could have right now. Okay. I had to scroll through my Goodreads for a bit to figure this one out. I'm going to go with We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. This 
is technically historical fiction, but it is based on true events that were recounted at a family reunion to the author, and then the author kind of ran with those family stories and created this book from that content warning. It's about the Holocaust. So, yeah, it's rough. But, yeah, we were the lucky ones, like, literally looking at my Goodreads, my blurb says definitely keep some handkerchiefs around while reading. So, yeah, if you're looking for something along those lines, check this book out, I guess. Question number 10. Strip club. Show me your favorite hardback book that's naked. This is easy. I'm very sad that my copy of Circe by Madeline Miller that came from Le Overseas was damaged with the uh, dust jacket. But I didn't really buy this book for the dust jacket. I very much bought this book for the naked hardback. Oh, it doesn't have anything on the back. Sad. But, I mean, it's shiny. And it's very floral. And did I mention it's shiny? I love anything shiny. It's so pretty. Now I have to put the dust jacket back on. Do I have the dexterity to do this right now? Maybe. Oh boy, this is crooked. Mm, fix the crooked. Mm. Nope, don't. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yep. I can do this. Eh. 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 I did it. And that's the end of this tag. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know I most certainly did. And I'm glad that I was responsible with myself and checked in with myself to see where my line was before things got too bad. And I did that. And I think I did that successfully. So go me. So if you'd like to do this tag, please do. And then let me know that you have done it. And if you stayed to this part of the video, leave me like a beer mug emoji down in the comments below or just comment mug and I'll know you made it this far. Anyways, thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.